we uh, begin our uh, uh, functions for the day with Professor C.K. Satanara and Murthy giving out his uh, introductory to our chief guest of the day, Professor Nathana, over to C.K. Satanara and Murthy.
Thank you, sir. Good morning, dear students and my beloved colleague T.K. Satnarayan Murthy and all the others of Vijaya Degree College. I request all the students to switch off their mobile phones during this lecture. And those who are sitting at the back, please come to the front seats so you will be able to follow me much better. Here we have plenty of seats. Some of the girl students who are there at the back can come and sit here. <laughs> I am going to begin my lecture with a nursery school rhyme, a nursery school poem. You may have read this poem before. If you have not read it, please listen to it intently. This is a poem of William Wordsworth. My heart leaps up when I behold a rainbow in the sky. So was it when my life began. So is it now I am a man. So be it when I shall grow old or let me die. The child is father of the man. And I could wish my days to be bound each to each by natural piety. I don't have a blackboard here. Almost all the words in this small poem are simple words, except for piety, P-I-E-T-Y. You may be wondering what the word means. Piety, according to dictionary, is reverence, that is having respect for something, devotion, acts of charity. This simple nursery poem tells us something very wonderful. William Wordsworth is recollecting his childhood experience. As a young boy, he used to see a rainbow in the sky. When we see a rainbow, I think we experience the same emotion felt by William Wordsworth. My heart leaps up when I behold. Behold means see. When I see a rainbow, my heart leaps, jumps. That means it makes us very happy. When we see a rainbow, we are happy. I used to enjoy this as a small boy. Now I am a grown man, 30, 40, 50. I still enjoy watching a rainbow. And then, he says, I want to enjoy the beauty of nature till my last day on earth, even in old age. Then he comes out with a very simple line, but a very meaningful line. The child is father of the man. What does this line mean? If any student can explain this, the child is father of man. The child is father of the man. Anybody who would like to volunteer? Why is the poet saying child is child is father of the man? Wordsworth here means what we learn as a child, our experiences, our impressions, emotions and feelings. They shape our personality. 
today we we are somebody because of our childhood experiences if they are good experiences you become a good person if it, if they are bad experiences you become a bad person you are parents your relatives your neighbors your school atmosphere environment everything shapes you makes you into a cultured civilized human being now i come to the title of my lecture let us grow and prosper with english i am going to be very simple in my talk today in the marketplace whether you are bcom students or bsc students you want to get a job that is the purpose of education what is the purpose of a degree you want to get a job you want to make a good living what do you need two things they are asking in the market today english language skills and computer skills if you are good in computers and if you know english you get a job many puc students get jobs with over uh, with the salary of 25000 rupees per month and over so english is important we all agree whether we like it or not english has come to stay in our country it was introduced into our country 200 years ago what is the purpose of education we go to primary school high school college main purpose of the education is to learn 3 hours or 3 hours number 1 reading in primary school you are taught to read number 2 writing writing is important number 3 arithmetic arithmetic is important because you want to calculate add multiply etc 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 what is the purpose of your ba bsc bcom and all that number 1 as i told you you want to get jobs number 2 you want information and then you want knowledge that is supposed to be given by your college and university but what is wisdom do you become wiser by going to national college or vijaya college or rv college where do you find wisdom where do you find wise people where it can be found who is a wise man it's a very big question you think about it now we come to study of english language there are two theories about learning language how does a small child learn its mother tongue does it pick up language from its mother and father and brothers and sisters and neighbors or does it inherit it through genes now biologists say we could have inherited the language through genes it's a genetic quality only man talks cow doesn't talk dog doesn't talk donkey doesn't talk man talks why does a man talk because as a baby the voice box organ of the throat is similar to a monkey similar to a cow or pig or any other animal this throat slips back one organ in the throat slips back that makes man different so i am able to talk to you i can express language i can express sounds animals can understand but animals cannot talk your dog understands you it loves you but it cannot speak back man has this unique quality english is a foreign language it is not a indian language it's not your mother tongue you have a mother tongue you learn it from your mother and father so perhaps sometimes it is kannada sometimes it is telugu sometimes it is tamil even that language you learn it and a child of 3 or 4 i have been observing picks up grammar rules unconsciously agreement of the verb with subject or tense or whatever it is it learns grammar unconsciously nobody teaches the child grammar how do you learn any other language let us take kannada bengali 
English and German. Kannada you know as mother tongue. But if you want to learn Bengali and German, what do you do? You have to learn it with effort. Somebody must teach you alphabet. Somebody must teach you grammar. Somebody must teach you simple sentences in Bengali or in German. And you learn it with great difficulty. What are the tools required for learning foreign language? You need a dictionary. I have been telling all my students, please always keep an English dictionary with you. And always keep a grammar book with you. Grammar book. If I want to learn good Kannada, now Kannada Sahitya Sammelna is going on. And everybody talks about Kuempu or Shivaram Karanta. You have Kuempu statues, Kuempu circle, Kuempu nagara, everything. But how many people would have read Kanur Subhamahegirti? Or how many people would have read the wonderful short stories of Kuempu? Nobody. If you want to learn good Kannada, you have to study literature. If you want to learn English, my theory is very simple. You have to read English. Even to learn Sanskrit, one has to take so much of pains. It doesn't come easily. It is ancient language of India. According to English language experts, you can learn English in six months time. Six months. Through audio-visual methods and English lab, if, if there is a good foreign teacher, you will be speaking in English, you will be reading in English, and you will be writing in English in six months. In India, you go to school, LKG and UKG, two years, primary three years, middle school three years, high school three years, PUC two years, degree three years. Totally, you would have taken a degree after 16 years of schooling. 16, 1, 6. After BSc and BCom, how many of our students exhibit a knowledge of English? Very few. After 16 years, you have not learned English, your writing is bad, your speaking skills are poor, and your reading is next to zero. After 16 years. Today, English is learnt in large numbers, in millions, in China. Chinese are obsessed because they want to become a modernized nation. So in China, the most popular person is not the president or prime minister. The most popular person in China is the English language teacher on television, a lady. And Chinese are learning English because English is an international language. I think our education system has failed. That is my opinion. After 39 years of teaching. I personally studied in Canada medium up to 7th standard. I went to a Wesleyan Christian mission school. I went to a convent school which is 160 years old. But in that school I studied up to 7th standard like so many others in Canada medium. You are Rao, Vishweshwaraya, Karanth, and so many others, and even uh, Rodam Narsima, the scientist, all of them studied CN Rao and everybody up to 7th standard in Canada. No harm. You can pick up English from 8th standard onwards. English medium, convent schools and international schools and public schools are irrelevant. If you want to learn English, what you must do? Number one, reading. You must read English and it must become a passion. Next to Vijaya College, there is an old building even now that used to be the gymnasium of uh, uh, the famous Kannada novelist K.V. Ayer, who wrote Rupadarshi novel, Shantana novel. His gymnasium was next door. He was one of the best bodybuilders, a vegetarian, best bodybuilders, one of the best bodybuilders in the world at the time, in 40s, 30s and 40s. One day our Kailasam told him, 
Many of our students go to gymnasium, boys and girls. They take steroids, they build body. Merely building body is not enough. He said, developing brain is more important than developing brawn. B-R-A-W-N, brawn. Brawn is muscle. More than brawn, brain is important. So he told K.V. Iyer, before going to sleep, every day read for one hour. That became a habit. He began to read after dinner every day. Then he wrote his Rupadarshi novel, which is based on a short story published in Reader's Digest, which made him very popular. He was a good bodybuilder and a good novelist also, good writer also. Please read a newspaper, English newspaper every day. It improves your general knowledge, geographical knowledge, international politics, economics, science, everything, and about sports. Read a newspaper. Read a magazine every week, one magazine. Read, your, read journals pertaining to your subject. This helps you. And also listen, listen to English. Either television news coming from BBC or CNN or Al Jazeera or listen to news from All India Radio also. Listening is equally important. Here is a quotation from Francis Bacon in an essay called The Off Studies. Reading maketh a man, reading maketh a man, writing a perfect man, speaking a ready man. If you are a good conversationalist, you can be good in arguing either in the court or in the legislative assembly or in a company meeting. Speaking a ready man. There is what is known as need based English. Doctors need a particular kind of English. Engineers, software engineers speak another kind of English. Their language which we don't understand. MBA executives speak another kind of English. Lawyers speak different kind of English. Politicians have a different kind of English. This is known as need-based English. So you have to learn about it. How can you learn proper English without a teacher? I am talking about a situation where there is no teacher. You are going to leave the college in one or two years time. Watch English films. Simplest is Laurel and Hardy comedies. Because Laurel and Hardy, they speak perfect dialogues, grammatically correct dialogues. Their pronunciation is British. Laurel and Hardy, you enjoy the film and you also pick up dialogues. You can watch Shakespearean films. Or you can watch My Fair Lady or Sound of Music or any other film. Today, in Bangalore, it is a very sad thing. No English film with dialogues run. There was a film called King's Speech, a wonderful film. They had to cancel the shows because they could not get 13 people in the auditorium. 13, 1, 3. 40 years ago, illiterate audience of Mysore and Bangalore, they used to watch films like Beckett or Cleopatra or Lawrence of Arabia or My Fair Lady. Indians have been writing English novels since uh, 1890 or so. From last 100, 110 years, 120 years, we have produced many writers. You can read at least Indian novels. R.K. Narayan, very easy to read. Films are there. Raja Rao, Mulk Rajanand, Chetan Bhagat, Vikram Seth, Jumpa Lahri, Arundhati Roy. All these are very famous names. Most famous English novel written by an Indian is all about H. Hatter by Desani according to T.S. Eliot. I think uh, you are all Indians, you must read at least Autobiography of Mahatma Gandhi. English is very good. My experiments with truth is 
not written by Gandhi originally in English. He wrote it in Gujarati. English version was written by Mahadev Desai, his secretary. And English is very good. Mahadev Desai's English is good. Another book which will be very interesting is Jawaharlal Nehru's autobiography written in jail, an autobiography. And uh, he discusses English literature and poetry and books and what not, James Joyce. He also wrote Inside the Jail, Discovery of India, Glimpses of World History, Letters to a Daughter, etc. You can read Remembered Village by M. N. Srinivas, the great sociologist. Rampura village is near Srinampatna and he studied that village for 50 years. He has written a book, beautiful book, called Remembered Village. Today on television or in the internet you can listen to very fine speakers of English. One of the best speakers of English today is Benjamin Netanyahu, the president of Israel. Benjamin Netanyahu's address to joint session of the Congress in USA four years ago is available. Now he again he is visiting. I hope this time Obama will be there. Last time Obama was not there and Netanyahu's speech, Netanyahu's speech is one of the finest speeches rendered by an English speaker. I have listened personally in Bangalore two speeches by Bishop Desmond Tutu. Desmond Tutu is a black bishop from South Africa. Uh, Desmond Tutu is one of the finest speakers of English. You can get his speeches also on internet. And another very fine speaker of this century is, according to me, is Nelson Mandela. Mandela was in solitary prison cell for 27 years. Today you can get on YouTube Sir Lawrence Olivier, Shakespearean actor, his Hamlet. Sir John Gilgut, Redgrave, Judy Dench and many others. Famous Shakespearean actors and actresses delivering Shakespearean dialogues. In the olden days, we did not have television. We had to wait for a Hollywood film and we would stand in the queue and watch uh, Hamlet in a theater. But today, at the tip of the button, you can listen to all these great speeches or Richard Burton reading poetry, especially ancient Mamla. One of the greatest radio speeches in the world give, ever given was by Orson Welles. And he read a novel called War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells that created panic. In New York, he started reading this novel. People who switched on the radio in the middle of the program thought that there was a Mauritian invasion. Some people had come from Mars and they had invaded America. So much of panic was there. They packed up their bags, they rushed to their cars, they began to run away from New York. There were traffic jams, there was confusion, there were heart attacks, hospitalization, and there was total chaos because this man was reading a novel. And his, most, his film is considered as one of the best films, that is Citizen Kane by Orson Welles. Citizen Kane is one among the ten best films ever made. Now, after discussing with you reading English, I've, I've come to another very interesting topic, thinking in English, dreaming in English. Can you think in English? Can you dream in English? That is very important if you want to write poetry or anything. And Sri Rajagopal Acharya said, English is gift of Goddess Saraswati to India. English is a gift of Goddess Saraswati to India. If you make use of English, it can pay dividends to you. 
it can take you places. Now, coming to writing. Writing is very difficult. What you can do at home is either you can keep a diary and write, or you can write short articles, sometimes pertaining to your own subject. On your own, please write it. Show it to your teacher or somebody else, so that it can be corrected. When it comes to writing, you should know spelling. Your grammar must be good. Nowadays, Indian English has reached awful, you know, state. You find people committing mistakes in galore. You look at the signboards, boards behind buses, in front of buses, or behind lorries, behind taxis, and on posters, everywhere one finds mistakes. Usually spelling mistakes and sometimes usage mistakes and grammar mistakes. And they often drop prepositions. Indian English is awful today, including the anchormen who keep shouting in the evenings after 7 o'clock, NDTV and uh, Times Now and all the other channels. And they, they do not know what is English accent or in intonation. They do not know anything about stress pattern. They shout as if they are in a fish market. If you ask me who speaks good English in the subcontinent today, I have to tell you very frankly, it is Pakistanis. Pakistanis speak better English than Indians. Let us not treat Pakistan as an enemy state in this matter. We have to acknowledge still their education system is much better. I am going to give you only one example that will convince you. You can go to YouTube and see it for yourself. Malala's Nobel speech. I have listened to Malala's three, four speeches. She is a very young girl and she speaks flawless English correct pronunciation and there is also content in the speech. BBC was uh, telecasting from Pakistan debates in Pakistan. They also did it from India. But Pakistani debates were of superior order. I have come across Sri Lankans who speak better English than Indians. Sixty, seventy years ago, we had one uh, gentleman called Right Honorable Srinivas Shastri, who was a high school teacher and a high school headmaster in Madras. At that time, Madras Legislative Assembly used to entertain nominated members. A famous advocate had served for two terms. He went to the governor of Madras presidency and said, I would like to retire because I have done my service. And the British governor said, we want you to continue because you are such a valuable member in the legislative assembly. That advocate said, no, my practice is suffering. I want to go back to my practice. You suggest someone who is fit enough to sit in your place, some suitable person. And Right Honorable Srinivas Shastri was recommended by this advocate. A high school teacher was recommended to the Legislative Assembly by this advocate. He came to be known as Silver-Tongued Srinivas Shastri. He was one of the finest speakers of English and a good writer also. Later, British sent him to Parliament in Delhi. From Parliament, he was sent to League of Nations in Geneva, in Switzerland. He was India's 
ambassador to the League of Nations. Once right honorable Srinivas Shastri, member of the Servants of India Society, went to New York. There was a civic reception for him. Governor of New York was there. Mayor of New York was there. Some dignitaries were there. Next day, New York Times newspaper reported all these people, you know, addressed the gathering. They made speeches. But the best speech was made by Right Honorable Srinivas Shastri from India. In America, I'm talking about 1940, uh, before 39, I think. Before 39. The best speaker was Right Honorable Srinivas. So Indians can speak English, use English as well as others. Maybe I have taken enough of your time, but I will complete it or rather conclude it with uh, only one anecdote and one more poem. I recently read a biography of Nalwadi Krishnajwadiya in Kannada. It is called Ali the Mahaswami Guru. He ruled for more than 25 years as Maharaja, an enlightened ruler who made Mysore state a modern state. He became Maharaja at the age of 18. Till then his mother, Vani Vilasa, was uh, the uh, dowager in charge of the kingdom. For the coronation of the Maharaja, Lord Karzan was invited from Delhi. Karzan came to Mysore. This function was held in Jagannath Palace. Mysore. Maharaja was an 18 year old boy. The governor, uh, the viceroy of India, Lord Cousin, made a speech, Englishman. And he made a speech with the help of pieces of paper. He had, uh, you know, a written, part of the speech was written. And often he would look into the speech and he made the speech. Then came Maharaja to make his speech. It was a, a thanksgiving speech. He was thanking the Britishers for allowing him to become the Maharaja of Mysore state. 18 year old boy spoke in English, very good English, without a piece of paper. He didn't have a prepared speech. Some 15 days later or 10 days later, London Times reported, the Times London, the oldest newspaper reported that Nalwadi Krishnajwadiya speech was far superior to Lord Curzon's speech. And he spoke without any pieces of paper. And his English was flawless and pronunciation was good. What I want to tell you before I conclude is English can be learned with effort. You are not going to absorb English language as if you know, you stand in the rain, rain pours, you get wet and you go home. No. English is a foreign language, you have to learn. You have to keep it. I knew, I knew one Supreme Court advocate, very fine speaker of English, who used to keep a dictionary next to his bed even in his 81st year. If he was in doubt, he would look into the dictionary. Dictionary gives you meaning, usage, pronunciation. What a wonderful thing. You need a dictionary. You, have, you must have a grammar book. If you are a good speaker of English, foreigners respect you. They admire you. They value you. Vivekananda made an impression in America because his English was so good. His speech impressed them so much. Wherever he went, he commanded respect. Starting from Swami Vivekananda and Gandhi and Nehru down to Subhash Chandra Bose and all the others, they used English as a tool or a weapon to gain independence. Sir C. V. Raman was a very fine speaker of English. Sarojini Naidu, called Nightingale of India, was a very fine speaker. She had a great sense of humor. If you learn good English, it will 
make you rich automatically. If you know some computer skills, if you go to all these companies, your ideas can be expressed in English. English is called devil's mother tongue. Devil's mother tongue. I can just give you one proverb in English which will be understood by Englishmen and Americans. To run with the hare and hunt with the hounds. Sow the wind and reap the wind. I know it doesn't make any sense to you the gathering here. To run with the hare and hunt with the hounds. Hare is a rabbit. It is a hunting sequence. Rabbit is running, chased by hounds, greyhound and all the other hounds, dogs. If somebody is with the rabbit as well as with the hounds, that means he is with the enemies also and he is hunting you down. If you sow wind and reap whirlwind means if you invite trouble, you can ask for more trouble. One, one foreigner from West Indies went to London. He had a letter of introduction to a famous writer. He went to this writer's house. The writer offered him a tea, cup of tea and some biscuits. They were talking. Then the writer said, we must have dinner someday. This man did not understand. He said it again, we must have dinner someday. He did not understand. We must have dinner someday. Then after three times, he thought, this fellow is not telling me when I should come for dinner on Friday or Saturday at 7.30 or what it is. He is simply saying we must have dinner someday. Then he walked out. Outside, near his room, he met his English friend. He asked him, this is what happened to me. What, what did he mean by this statement, this question, uh, this statement? We must have dinner someday. That man started laughing. He said, it's a polite way of saying, please go home. I am also going home. Thank you very much.